Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Alter Your Health podcast, your source of information and inspiration to promote the holistic transformation of your health and the health of our planet. I'm really excited to introduce you to this week's guest, Jovina Chan. Jovina was actually my yoga teacher during my yoga teacher training that she led uh, through the Kripalu Institute at Esalen. And um, I was profoundly impacted by Jovina's presence, just her her presence in the world. She's one of those kind of powerful, palpable beings that you can really feel when she walks in the room and she um she that energy is definitely transmitted through her yoga teaching and i imagine everything that she does in her world so we had a conversation me and jovina about what it means to be fully alive she just led a another workshop at esalen which she does from time to time and this workshop um, was called being fully alive and We were talking about um, movement and mindfulness and yoga and all of these sort of practices that can be a practice and can be a tool to access our vitality and our, you know, deeper purpose in this world and really a, a sense of health and well-being on all levels. So that's what our conversation was revolving around. It was a good one with Jovina. Um, Jovina leads all sorts of transformative experiences around the world, and you can find out more about Jovina and what she's doing by visiting her website, which is www.jovina.com. So without further ado, why don't we just sit back and relax and enjoy this conversation with Jovina. So welcome back to another episode and welcome to the podcast, Jovina. <laughs> Thank you so much, Benjamin. So hap- I'm happy to be here. Yeah, we were just kind of reminiscing on our meeting, I guess, over five years ago now. Jovina was my yoga teacher. Uh, she facilitated mm-hmm. the yoga teacher training that was you know, such a powerful part of my health and wellness journey as yoga has kind of been an ever present thread in my, you know, foundation of health. And I've just learned that Jovina kind of since that time has been on her own kind of uh, exponential evolution of some sort. So (laughs) I'm so happy to catch you Jovina and dive into (laughs) what you've been up to and how how you've been and how you know how yoga and everything else has continued to be a part of your life mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah super super excited to be here because i actually just took a year off from work um 2013 uh, sorry no what is now is 2018 mm-hmm. so last year basically yeah. just last year I took a sabbatical off and and literally to listen to to attending to my own health and wellness as well that's why i took a year off Awesome. So we can kind of dive into that as we feel, you know, as we feel necessary. But um, I just want to kind of allow you to kind of share your abbreviated journey to how you've kind of become, uh, I mean, you're a facilitator of yoga and also, you know, all sorts of, I don't know, health consciousness, evolution practices and workshops. And you're just like, kind of like, from one from one side of things, you're kind of like all over the place, but at the same time, it's very focused in the overall intention. So, how did you come to be who you are, essentially? Mm, okay, so <laughs> I was. <laughs> that's like a long question. <laughs> However, let me think. I was thinking about that question um, because you you know, you're very sweet of you to to send me the question beforehand. This particular one. I was thinking that the 11 years I spent in New York City um, pursuing performing arts and during that time I was also doing martial arts for six years, I realized how much that lay the foundation for, um, for this practice of being present, present to the moment. And so much of theater and performing arts is about learning to hone my ability to concentrate 
and to be present every moment when I'm on stage or when I'm, yeah, when I'm on stage. And martial arts is such a mind, body, awareness practice as well. So I have really good foundations of that. And then, and then I spend, um, that was 11 years in New York City and then eight years in Massachusetts where I moved to um, live in uh, Kripalu Yoga Center in Lenox, the Bookshires. And totally dive into a lifestyle, like a modern ashram, living on property and diving into yoga, living, breathing, teaching, um, being trained as a teacher trainer for Kripalu Yoga. And that began my more formal um, education about facilitation. And also, at the same time, I was very fortunate that I discovered another practice called soul motion conscious dance practice, which brought me then br- brought me to Esalen Institute in the Big Sur, California in 2007. So I moved to Kripalu in 2007. I discovered soul motion uh, practice in 2007. So I realized there's a parallel practices that I took on since 2007, which is a conscious dance. It's a free form movement mm. to bring awareness and consciousness. And then that's the yoga, which is another uh, modality and practices that bring awareness and consciousness within and also without. So I was very lucky to have both. So in that way, those are the alchemy. They kind of alchemize each other and, and, and there I yeah. born to be who I am now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I've been on the other side, the, you know, in your program, I was in the 30 day immersion program, which was, um, you know, it, it was all I knew in terms of yoga teacher training and, um, mm-hmm. and, you know, since completing that and since connecting with other yoga teachers and talking about their training and, you know, how, how their experience was, I realized how profoundly unique and powerful the the combination of this practice and the alchemy of these practices that you bring to the facilitation of the yoga teacher training and I'm sure everything else that you do and um Mm. so I'll speak as a you know it's given you know as an experiencer of of your work um Mm. you know validating what you do and the profound the <laughs> Thank profundity you. of it, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I know that you you've had this connection with Esalen since two thousand seven. Is that mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And yes. then, so you just you just facilitated a workshop like a couple of weeks ago, um, and that w- that was was that something new for you? The fully alive workshop, or it's actually a workshop that I've been presenting at, at Esalen for maybe. F- five years now cool. so it, it used to be uh, a weekend format yeah and then so this time i just did a five days format awesome awesome so yeah. could you kind of tell me a little bit about what that entails i mean the like the the five day kind of the, the yeah the title is being fully alive which is very intriguing because what i hear that um i think of course like being fully healthy, you know, alive, you know, alive and vitality is kind of synonymous to health, which is, you know, what I'm all about, of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's ultimately, you know, I think that's what I'm also um, intrigued yeah. and, and wanting to serve this, uh, this practice of being fully alive. So it's a five day program and I combine yoga, conscious dance and meditation, and also philosophy, some yogic philosophy. And in the five days, we, we have uh, opportunity to keep returning um, to practices. And I was telling my group that one of the goals for me as a facilitator for this five days is to create a field of practice where we can all dive in and to practice what does it mean to individual What does fully alive means to each of us? And then instead of thinking about it, but put it into practice. Mm -hmm. So um, movement, conscious dance movement is a free form movement. And using that 
to tap into the body, to bring the body into a certain stage of awareness where the chatter mind has, is, is put aside and we are one with each moment. And then there's yoga practices that we um, bring in a lot of breath practices and being aware of alignment. And then, then the meditation is about turning and being very attentive to the pattern of our thoughts and to become more and more, to know ourselves more and more intimately that way, to know the mind more intimately. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of like the overall summary of the, pra- of the workshop. Yeah, sounds amazing. So I'm curious to know what, um, what was gained, like what the, uh, what people gained from that and what they, uh, what am I trying to ask? Like, what was the ultimate definition of what being fully alive means to uh, the participants and maybe to yourself? <laughs> what did, what did, what did everyone arrive at to the answer to that question? There, I have to say congratulations to all of us is that there, there is a variety of answers, yeah. uh, which is rightly so. And, and I think it's really hard to find one word to describe, you know, to have that answer. But words like passionate about, about passion, about doing what we really want to do or are called to do, um, being awake, aware, um, have a sense of humor, appreciating life and um, courage. There, there is really quite a lot of, um, it's almost every day we come up with new words and new understanding and discovery. I feel like, like for me, I, I would say it's like a moment to moment. It's almost like an explosion, like a fireworks of moment to moment alignment, like a true alignment of body, breath, mind, speech and action like there is a certain alertness to attending to each moment of our lives and that that's a quality that's a like a taste that is that just just take your mind off from other things but just being here so it's yeah it's like it's hard it it, it's a lot yeah well, it sounds like doing all of doing the yoga, doing the conscious movement, do, you know, just all these different activities that seem very much body based, you know, like you're moving your body and it's and there's always in that there's always an opportunity to develop this kind of body awareness, like where where is my body in space? How does my body feel in these positions? And as we kind of kind of focus our mind away from kind of the mundane thoughts because we're kind of distracted maybe to kind of feel our body more. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe that leads to the experience of being more present in each moment. Would you, Mm -hmm. would you say that like, or how else, how, what, in what other ways might the movement aspects of the facility of the practices that you facilitate lead to more um fully being fully present Mm. Mm. i i i this could be a bias (laughs) what i'm about about to say Mm -hmm. but i have i have always loved um to move and as a child i i love to do exercise with my father when he was lifting his lifting weights and martial arts and yoga there's something about the body is almost like my car. It's like the car, like it's a vehicle to take me from point A to point B. It's to take me, you know, to go to the bathroom. I need my, take my body to, to go. There's, you know, to go and experience something, to go and do a yoga teacher training. The, the body is a very basic and important vehicle. And the body has the ability to store not just the bones, the, the muscles, the blood, marrow cells but it also store the breath the vital energy like it's a vessel for the vital energy the life force to move in so many different directions it is also a, a, a vessel to store our memories our our thoughts our anger our bliss our inspiration and how the body has this capacity to store so many different levels of who we are 
And I feel like the more the body can be, the body like is like a well-run engine, like the car. If the body is always well-tuned, maintained, then the, the car can go to many places, right? It can go to the desert. It can go to the ocean. It can take you for a long trip. It can go fast and go slow. It can, so I feel like the body becomes, to me, it's like a, one of the fundamental things that I need to attend to yeah. in order to be to be fully alive. Um, but of course, there are many ways to attend to the body. It doesn't have to be like, like this all the time. But I think, I think the ability to just know, to attend to the well-being of the body, it could be just maintaining a good posture or, or have a very basic flexibility to the body. I feel like as, as much as we can, keeping the body open, um, for for things to pass to for anything to pass pass through or or expressed yeah yeah the the car metaphor never gets old to me it's just like so it just right. you know it's so easy to grasp onto that you know taking care of our bodies and and moving our bodies the way we would exercise a vehicle you know it's like if you just park your mm-hmm. car for six mm-hmm. months and then the you know the battery might die or this, I don't know, you know, in the spark plug, right. or the transmission, the oil needs to be, you know, refreshed. So yeah, there's definitely something about m- keeping active and like, you know, being in touch with movement that it's like, you know, just keeps us in our body in a more full present sort of way. Right. Um, yes. Yeah, I love that. So, and what would you say other practices of like keeping the body tuned up as you would with a car besides the movement you know you, you mentioned kind of the stillness like the mm-hmm. the stillness presence mm-hmm. but but any other kind of practices that you would say are vital to keep us fully alive in our bodies i would say so Two things I would say. One is to go out into nature, like hiking, being in the garden, walk barefoot, just in the garden and remove as many layers that keep us, keep the boundary between us and nature. So anytime there's an opportunity to take up your shoes and just have your feet walking on sand or, you know, have your palm and just touch a tree. I think those are a really great reminder, and it, I there's a tr- I feel like there's always a conversation between the elements and us, and somehow certain things that we wear or certain house that we are in can block that that conversation that can also enliven us. And um, you know, walking, go trekking or hiking is one of the great way to be exposed to the elements. Like look up in the sky feel the breeze, feel the air, you know, touch the, the stream, touch the surface of the stream of water. I would also say the other thing is like, one of the things that can keep the body fully alive is also our mindset. What we think can change the body. So even though it's not an external um, thing or an action, but I, the more I... Uh, tap into meditation I realize how much my thoughts create a certain blockage in my body as well so to keep the body fully alive the mind has to also sign on to this whole contract (laughs) of like keeping, yeah like what am I thinking what how do I think my life how do I think my conversation with you and how do I think has enough has an impact on on the the health of the body as well for sure. I mean, that's all, that's been kind of a constant theme throughout these conversations that I've been having yeah. with so many wonderful people. And I'm curious to know your perspective in terms of, you, you know, your unique, your personal relationships with your thinking mind, because a lot of people, a lot of people address it differently. You know, it's like a lot of people want to quiet the mind. A lot of people want to make friends with the mind a lot of, some people want to like kill the ego you know <laughs> <laughs> like there's kill all these the kind of, there's all these kind of like uh um uh, ways of going about addressing and relating right. with the mind so what's your your personal relationship with your mind 
It's, I, I love this question because I, I feel like I went through all that. I want to quiet it. I want to conquer it. I want to like befriend it. I want to like bride it. Um, <laughs> there. Oh gosh. Um, I, I, I think ultimately at the end is like, I, I, I want to remember to love my mind, to understand, to appreciate and to understand that it's not easy to be my mind <laughs> because there's just so many things to think about and, and also to understand um, the distractions that I'm exposed to. There's distractions and there's, there are so many um, uh, stress it could be stress and could be demands and desires that that I am exposing myself constantly to so many diff- in so many different directions, whether it's mine or not. So that I I have a deeper appreciation how the mind has to handle so many things in a daily basis, besides keeping me alive to survive. You know all the little to do lists to do. Mm-hmm. So I can understand why it is so is so scattered. So I think in the in the beginning is to have that deep appreciation of what the job of the mind is not easy, <laughs> and then I think for me is to I think the the word is is to develop an intimacy for me now like you know as like I said I went through all that like to conquer to the but now I think recently it's more like to develop a, a sincere a sincere intimacy with my own mind and to when I practice now, when I practice meditation is more about like watching more like about watching with a, with full, with full acceptance of like, wow, like I, like that mind just went there again, you know, it just went to that thought again. How did I even end up? But it's the tone of my, of my watching has changed Mm -hmm. and to be patient, to be patient with the mind and like, okay, let's start again. Like just start again like see I can if I can can be continuous in my concentration and then like oh wow like it went again it went to that place again and and just staying with that curiosity of and then in that way cultivate that intimacy with my mind so that I know even before it starts to wander away I'm like oh I can I feel it's coming it's going to wander now so that's where I am now with my mind yeah no I love that it's it seems like it's kind of along the lines of a an intimate friendship, like you said, you know, yeah. you're intimately friendly, but, but not in kind of this hum, human way, but more of like this, this unconditionally loving way. Maybe your mind is your, your lover, as opposed to just like a friend, <laughs> you know, you're yeah, yeah. connecting on that intimate level, right? That full right. acceptance. Yeah, no, I love that. That, yeah, I think that's kind of the ultimate uh-huh. The ultimate relationship that we're striving between our, you know, between all aspects of ourselves, just fully accepting the mind, the body, the emotions, you know, whatever is present in, in each moment. It's just like a, an invitation to just deepen in that relationship, the unconditional acceptance of it. Yeah. yeah. So if you're up for it, Jovina, um, you, you mentioned before about kind of taking the last year or so and addressing your own like health or health or wellness kind of challenges. I don't know what the words were that you put, but what, what was that for you? And maybe, maybe not, you know, and we don't need your, all of your details, but like, what, what was that like for you and how, how did you address that? I, I noticed, I have been noticing um, the last Three years ago, I started to notice there was a, a, a change in my um, energy level just from inside. Like I could, people from outside maybe couldn't tell, like I'm still yeah. doing no, a well, lot. Of- from me, me being from the outside, and I haven't been with you in five years, but I remember you five years ago. I mean, you struck me as like one of the most ultimately vital, like strong on every level sort of human beings, like a, you know, super human on like, you know, a very comprehensive level. So I can imagine that people would still see you as that, but yeah, Mm -hmm. I I understand and appreciate the internal feeling 
being yeah different yeah anyway, right anyway. it's like it's like the internal it's like a thermometer that is like inside me like is changing level like the the temperature the read is like it's getting lower and lower and i went personally i went through quite a lot of personal changes um, my parents both passed away in 2013 after we we had our time in at Esalen. Later the year, my mom passed away, and then a year and and three months later, my dad passed away. And then I moved. Um, I changed my I changed location from Massachusetts to California. So my, one of my mentors passed away. So it was there were many things emotionally. Like I was, um, I was. Yeah, what is a good word to say? Like integrating that emotionally, and at the same time, we're still teaching and traveling. And I have a lot of reserve in terms of um, energy, and I was starting to tap into my reserve of attending to those things as well. And then, and then, yeah, about I think in twenty after my father passed away. At the end of 2015, I begin to see a difference in my energy level. I like I could tell. And 2016, 2017, I was like, I was 2016. I was like going strong. I'm like, but then I can feel internally again. There are certain things I have little less tolerance than I usually have more tolerance. And so those are like signs to tell me that I'm starting to feel like I'm getting tired or like burning it might i might if i continue like this i i will burn out mm. so in 2017 i um so end of 2016 i decided I, I need to take time off for myself because it is it starts to i could t- i could smell like it's it's going to start to like change mm. my how i come to teaching i might start to not want to teach and i did feel like i just don't want to teach anymore i'm so tired these are my internal thoughts. So I, I decided to just do it. And so I did. And I took a, about a year off and I said that I want to do everything. <laughs> I want to do, I have, I want to do whatever I experienced that one year. I, I, it has nothing to do with yoga. It has nothing to do with my teaching. I want to experience things I've never experienced before. I also noticed like, my mind has reached a point where I notice I just cannot solve the problems that is created by my own mind. So there are a lot of signs that tell me that I need to like step out of my circle and go into other circles experiences. So I, I did. And um, it was frightening in the, in the beginning because of um, many unexpected things happened in the sabbatical that I thought <laughs> I didn't plan for that. But, um, it took a while. It took a while. I think it maybe six, seven months into it that I begin to relax and enjoy my sabbatical. Yeah. So I just came back in May, in end of April this year to to start my teaching. So May was the first month I I um, returned to teaching. Wow! And what a beautiful way to you know drop back into it with this workshop, which seems so kind of comprehensive and supportive wow. of you. You know. Um, yeah, it just, it, it sounds amazing, you know, from hearing your sharing, it sounds amazing that you were able to really, you know, from, from my perspective, at least it seems like you were able to tune into your body and this kind of internal thermometer and kind of, yeah. it sounds like there wasn't really any external symptoms or, uh, maybe, maybe it was just kind of this, it sounds, if I'm hearing you correctly, it sounds like just an internal kind of intuition or feeling like just pull off the you know, pull off the gas pedal a little bit and turn inward and nurture myself so that I can continue to be this fully alive human and, uh, you know, yeah. live purpose. Yeah. So I think that, you know, it's very, um, inspiring because so many of us, I'm, I mean, I know that I'm one of them. I usually push past continuing, you know, I feel the thermometer gauge going <laughs> But it's like, you know, continuing to push because right. outer expectations or inner judgments or whatever it may yes. be, there's always a kind yeah. of, there's always some reason that maybe would be 
you know, mm -hmm. pushing us to move through the inner disturbance, but you listen. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, well, I have done. I have done pushing, pushing myself before. Yeah, so that's why you know that, yeah. <laughs> this time when it when it happened, it's like okay, I've done that before. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what did you? So what did? What kind of things did you do to nurture yourself during that year off? I, I read. Well, there are many things that <laughs> that was forced upon me. I. Um, that I have to like just take time off and lie on in the bed because I had um, uh, an accident, and so I have and and it it just like it stopped me on my track from going anywhere. So I basically a lot of the time was lying in bed, mm -hmm. and I read books that I'm not that have nothing to do with uh, transformation. <laughs> <laughs> I've read books that I do a yoga sutra or I read books like. I read a few children, uh, young adults, children, young adult books, children books. Um, I listen to music I, um, that, that, has, that I would not normally listen to. I, um, I, went, um, I went home to Singapore a few times. I, uh, I went to Nepal, which I really wanted to go for two and a half months and I went trekking. Um, to the Himalayas and then I went to um, I went to a monastery for a month I'm not sure that was nurturing but that was something that I wanted to do but I think what was what happened was I was just not going at the pace that I used to go so that alone was nurturing I slowed down tremendously yeah when when was the accident in this was it at the beginning of it was in the beginning. It was in July. Well, I, I started yeah. my sabbatical in May in 2007. And in July, I had an accident where I got a very bad knee infection. Huh. I went to the hospital. Yeah. Wow. And then I have an operation. And yeah, so it was, so that was, that's why it was like, okay, I did pray to experience the things that I never experienced before. And this could be one of them because I never experienced anything like that. So mm -hmm. just taught me that I have to be very specific next time when I make a prayer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, be very, yeah, a little bit more, yeah, exactly, right. focused in the prayer. But it's, it's always interesting to me that we, you know, use words like, you know, it was an accident. I know it was an accident, but it was at the same time, it sounds like it kind of forced you or led you to really just slow down significantly um, yes and sometimes these you know quote-unquote accidents are not accidents i don't you know i don't know how else to put it it's, it's, right or in at least in hindsight yeah. we can see oh that wasn't an accident yeah i know it's like it looks like accident but i i i know it's not an accident <laughs> i need yeah, <laughs> somehow i need that yeah mm. Yeah, well, it sounds like a nurturing year indeed. And um, I'm curious, beyond the pace of slowing down and just kind of reading and, you know, just, yeah, just turning back the dial, were there any other like physical practices or, you know, food or, you know, like medicinal, anything on like a more physical level? Right. I, what did I, I'm trying to even remember. I, I think maybe because of that, I had a, quite a bit of time to, my friend, um, like home cooked food from friends and myself were able to like, just taking up cooking again, you know, where mm. I'm not just like quickly make a, make a meal. So definitely I did that. And also I feel that I think one of the things that the slowing down and being able to to appreciate um, I think it was also the, the time where it, meditation becomes like one of the practices that I could do because physically it was hard. I was on crutches for a while. So that become also like it gives me the time to, to spend more time on meditation as well. So mm -hmm. those are some of the practices. And I think I wrote, I also, you know, do other things that, you know, physically, which is great because that was also a time of like, wow, like, you know, I can't, I'm on crutches and 
I'm such a body oriented person. So what do I do now? So yeah. it was a really good practice of like letting go of that identity and then finding other ways of, of um, practices that would nurture my heart mm-hmm. and nurture my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, rest. Yeah. I'm curious when you were choosing to engage in, you know, more, more um, strong, you know, deeper meditation practice or more writing or it's kind of these soulful nurturing activities. Was it a conscious choice? Like I, I want to do this in order to feel better or is it like, I've got more time. I'm just gonna fill up my time and, you know, like, yeah, I'm just, curious from like personally what your mm, connection I, 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 I think that those are the things that I've always wanted to spend more time so it was it was synchronicity that now I'm like okay you have more time now mm. you know literally like more time I have nowhere to run or nowhere to go mm. and just being here so that was it was like I, like you say it's not really an accident right Mm. Isn't that true? And so I did. I have more time to, to spend doing those things. Um, I, 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 I just marvel also on, on like once I let go of what it needs to look like, somehow I always trust this, like the universe has a better plan, you know, for, for me. Mm-hmm. And how, as much as my mind thinks like, I want to do this, this, and this during my sabbatical, but I, I know, I trust that the mind, the, the universe has another plan for me. Like your sabbatical is about, you know, not like staying put in one place and let, let, your, let what is, has been germinating in your heart to slowly unfold onto paper or onto and to just simple watching your breath and meditation and not, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And I especially love how um, it sounds like you kind of related to each of these practices and choosing into them. I mean, I asked you, it's funny because I asked you the question, like what other kind of physical kind of medical kind of things did you engage with? And it sounds like you were engaging in those practices kind of with right. the intention, with kind of a medical healing intention. I, I right. mean, so that, and that of course changes the whole experience because it's like, if I'm going to sit down and meditate just because someone told me to do that or because it's, it's like, quote unquote, it, I know it's good for me, then that's one thing. But if I'm going to sit down and meditate because I know it's going to be healing for me physically and mentally and emotionally and spiritually, then that's, mm. then that's going to create a, obviously a whole nother experience. Yeah. Yeah. I, when I went to, when I went to, so I always wanted to go to Nepal when I was a teenager. So I finally made that trip last year during my sabbatical. And I was, in the last few years, I've been very intrigued with um, Tibetan Buddhism. And that's why I went to the monastery, a Tibetan monastery for a month um, to study Tibetan Buddhism. And I think, again, like nothing is really by accident. Um, my, my time there was truly healing because I was, the month, there was, the month was studying about Buddhism in terms of, um, you know, the Four Noble Truth, life is impermanent, death is, in, you know, is for sure. We don't know when we're going to die. Um, there's a lot of practices where we rely on our own personal experiences, past experiences to meditate on. And I think one of the most healing um, thing about that month was that I was able to grieve about my parents' passing which I wasn't able to fully really embrace that grieving process because when they, when they both passed away, I was still having made, trying to maintain a very busy teaching schedule. And so there was a month where nobody knows me. I was among hundreds of people and I was able to just go there freely to miss my parents, to think about them, to, to use them as, as, um, as my object of meditation, of gratitude, of, of, of things that I've done or didn't do. Mm. And I, 
I have to say it was very healing. And that was something that I needed because that weighs me down, that weighed me down. And that's why I was so tired um, before I took the sabbatical is the weight of the grief. Mm -hmm. So yes, so, so that's also another thing that I, now I remember. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that one. That, that's profound. And I, whenever people share stories like that, you know, I always have this imagery of someone, you know, there's a grief moment and everything's, you know, on this kind of um, time continuum and we're moving forward and we're kind of moving mm-hmm. along with the grief, but we have, we, but once we slow down, then like the grief kind of catches up. And then yeah. it kind, and then it's like you know, it it is what it is. We're we're able to feel it, um, mm-hmm. but I think a, a lot of times we live in a society in a world where everything's kind of moving forward on this space time continuum mm-hmm. thing, and you know mm-hmm. we're kind of we're kind of not consciously like, but m- maybe some people are you know running away or like not running away, but kind of trying to outrun the grief and kind of just ignore it. But once being, once stillness arrives, then it can Mm. kind of catch up and you know, what a blessing to kind of feel that and, you know, process that because one of the teachings that I, that I've received is that we experience healing on all of our levels to the extent that we Mm -hmm. that we feel our emotions or that we feel what's present Mm -hmm. yeah so that's a great testament to that yeah yeah and what um yeah what a blessing to be there in in such a special sacred place as well it seems you know it it's um it's a whole nother thing to kind of just be sitting at home resting in bed Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. um you know there's obviously opportunities to create sacred space wherever but being in a place that is you know deeply meaningful for you it sounds like a real profound experience yeah yeah it is very profound i was very very thankful that i i did go yeah cool so um we've kind of talked about mindfulness well back coming back to what are what we kind of started our discussion about mindfulness uh conscious movement yoga and it sounds like mm-hmm. these these kind of things and you know we've kind of stuck on the mindfulness a bit in the last um few minutes but the other things are certainly a big part of your life and your daily practice i'm sure and are there any other ingredients that you would say that leads to your daily practice of you know being fully alive or embodying your fullest potential here Mm. in this life Mm. (laughs) i am maintaining a close circle of good friends and maintaining contact with my family is another they are like key ingredients of keeping me fully alive Mm -hmm. like sharing sharing my my time with them and 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 that's something that also during the sabbatical i was like thinking about like you know there's only that much time i have um on this earth this beautiful earth there's a there's an expiration date to jovina being alive and and then and really taking a good look about like who are the friends that i want to who are my friends like a circle of friends that i want to continue to to put attention to and and it's so easy to get caught up with work and um many things like that and i i'm like revisiting about the quality of um staying connected um the other thing too i I didn't tell you but um the year off i i took myself off social media so i wasn't on facebook or instagram those are the two main social media so it free up a lot of time um Mm. and uh, it was pretty um it is is very um something that i'm like really enjoy Mm -hmm. and and funny and and because of that i don't have social media to see what people are doing and so it really makes me think about how do i want to stay in touch with people when i come back from my sabbatical and also giving me an opportunity to 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 really think about certain friends or or even like certain students like certain 
group of students that I have, you know, cultivated relationship over the years. Mm. And most important thing, like how do I stay in touch with my family who are very far away? They're all in Singapore. And so I feel like the, the balance of, well, of health and well-being is because there's a healthy connection. I have a healthy time, a healthy connection with myself. So I have like my own alone time, but I also have time that I share with loved ones mm-hmm. and friends. Yeah. Yeah. That's certainly an important ingredient. Um, yeah. And I'm just curious how, I mean, it's, it's, it sounds like a great practice for that you had being off of social media, which, you know, kind of drew upon this, um, you know, more inherent choice to reach out and stay connected and how do you exercise that choice? I mean, is it as simple as, you know, texts and phone calls and emails or like what's how, like in, from your perspective, what's the best way that you have of stay, of creating and maintaining close nurturing mm-hmm. relationships? Yeah, I think for me, for now, um, more like phone calls, like hearing voice, like, like just, um, connecting through speaking, um, I think it's still the best way. I mean, of course, the the best way is to go hang out with them. Yeah, of course. Um, but it's hard. <laughs> yeah. But it's hard. It's like you know, they are, I have great friends in Massachusetts, and I'm in California. But there's also like you know, like there are some friends locally, and 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 also my family in Singapore. So like, just being aware of how much time, like weekly like is there like a I have out a certain time like to connect with one friend you know like and then have a quality time like to really have a good talk for like an hour mm-hmm. um i'm starting to use more emails now back to using emails and uh, texting is really easy mm-hmm. um especially yeah. i can text like to a, a few friends at the same time like sending pictures of me doing certain things um and i and and the last month since i get, came by in may somehow synchronicity like that intention like manifested itself because I like almost every week I will run into some friends I was at Esalen and there will be friends from different part of my world like I get connected to and then I was in New Mexico and then I was connecting to a few friends and then I was I'm going to Palm Springs tomorrow to connect with some friends and then stopping in LA to connect with some friends and then back here so like somehow it is happening like to, yeah. to um, yeah, so it's, I think it's like that, that intention within us needs to be, to be clear about that. And then somehow it will manifest itself. Yeah. That's a really great reminder for me because I always, you know, continue maintaining a, a close relationship with the people that are important to me is always kind of this constant question of how to do it best. But you just mm-hmm. hit the kind of important point on the head that I just really have to be really clear in my intention to maintain those yeah. relationships. And then I will kind of, that will create space to, you know, engage mm-hmm. with those people in, how, in mm-hmm. the ways that serves us both best. And it's, it's also interesting, you know, I didn't really know that you were on the sabbatical, but I, you know, it seems like I reached out to you as well in this, as you were kind of coming back on the scene in your yeah. world. Um, yeah. How, how synchronistic there. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad that the timing worked out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, how about any other ingredients, relationships, mm. movement, yoga, mindfulness, mm. anything, nature so- you mentioned. Yeah nature so i i i want to share this um i share with my group uh, of people um at esalen there's um, a documentary about um the blue zones about people who live till mm. um they are a hu- they are hundreds mm-hmm. and there's a community of people who actually in the community there are people living to a hundreds it's not just one person and mm. and so so in in uh, in my workshop when i talk about being fully alive is that there I, we did this exercise to, there's a, I call it the, the life, well, this life calendar 
that I got this idea from uh, from a, a TED talk that I I, um, I think is Tim Erb Erber. I don't quite remember his last name, but basically he talks about procrastination. Why why we procrastinate, and then he talks at the end. He show a, a little boxes of ca- like a life calendar of like if you live to like this many years, these are the number of boxes you have. So how many boxes have you lived? Have you used? And what do you want to do with the remaining boxes? And is to inspire us not to procrastinate, you know, certain things that we think is important. So anyway, we, I brought this up to my group and we have this conversation about like, if we live to like 81, for example, like how, how many boxes we have lived and used and what do we want to do with the rest of it? Or if we live to a hundred, like those people in the blue zones, what would you do? Like, what are the choices that you will make in your lifestyle to, so that you live to a hundred and you're healthy? You know, it's not hundred and you're, because these people in the blue zones, they are, they're still working in a hundred. Yeah. You know, they no, go out and they chop, yeah. right? It's, it's incredible. Yeah. It's amazing. So, so it backs to like fully alive, right? We, can we be fully alive when we are hundred? So what are the, some of the practices? So I think the other thing I would say is that look at the lifestyle choices that you're doing daily in a daily basis. It's not like 10 years later, I'm going to do this, but the day to day, every day, what do you do to contribute to the well being of being fully alive? So that, it, so that when we, so that when I am old, I maintain a certain health and well being and simple thing like what, what we eat, how we eat, how many hours do you sleep? Um, so th- what kind of thoughts I go into my mind and like the friends, like I said, like circle of friends is important to keep the health. And, and also I think like maintaining a personal practice for me is very important. Like showing up every day and committed to like, I say, I want to show up for myself, then show up for myself. So it can be like 10 minutes, but I do show up for myself every day to do my practice. And what are the practices I know that my body needs if I know that I'm always very scattered, then I do 10 minutes of prayer, you know, so, so getting to know oneself very well and very honest with oneself. Like mm. I can't sit for a long time. So I move. So those are the things that I think is also very important about having like a very honest conversation with myself about what really works for me. You know, my, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, you remember we, we, we went over the bug, you know, we took, we mm. read a bit about the Bhagavad Gita, yeah? Like that mm. it, it's better to do your dharma, um, fail in your own dharma than to try to do other people's dharma perfectly, right? It's like our own passion, what I'm called to, has a very unique flavor. Nobody will have the same flavor as I. So then how do I show up? And I think having that honest talk then it will shift our everyday choices. My everyday life choices will be different. So that, are some, that is something also bringing that honesty and awareness about that. I think it will be, is one of the ingredients to be fully alive. Yeah, man, that, I, I really love that. Um, that seems like a central piece of just having this honest relationship with ourselves, which, mm-hmm. I mean, speaking for me personally, because that's the only person I can speak for. Um, it just seems like it's harder and harder in a lot of ways to not, you know, it, we're, there's a lot of resistance against that. In our world, we're shown mm-hmm. how to be in so many ways. And that yeah. kind of makes being honest with ourselves more and more challenging because there's so many distractions and mm-hmm. opportunities to be swayed away from what's true to us you know, for example, you know, everyone's told that meditation, you know, does, is great to support every level of well-being. But as you said, which is, you know, very important and relevant, some people simply can't, like, like it's not in their constitutionally for their body, for their how they are. It's not really supportive to sit in this classic meditative legs crossed you know, straight back way for an hour a day. It just, it's not very, like, I don't think it's very healthy necessarily. So there's a unique flavor and it's important to tap mm. into that. It's important to be honest, like you said. I, 
that's just a great reminder. Yeah. yeah. And also yeah. remember that we change. We change just yeah. like the season. We grow older every day. <laughs> so our practice needs to shift with us as well. What, you know, our own personal, I, I think, I think that personal practice is like the ingredient we put in, it, we will get whatever result depending on the ingredient that we put in. So it's like that thing they say, like, if you want to, you want to plant, if you plant orange, oranges, you get oranges, you're not going to get apples. So mm -hmm. it's like being very honest, like, what do I, what am I planting every day? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's yeah. just like be, so we have yeah. the courage to shift it yeah it's just so straightforward and and such a profound important reminder to just be really clear and honest with where we, who we are where we're at what we want and living mm -hmm. our own dharma as as you put or as the bhagavad gita put um yeah yeah and and what another you know profound reminder to just not procrastinate just because of the, mm -hmm. just because of the sweetness and the impermanence of, uh, of this life, and um, and yeah. you know, once again, a, a great important reminder for myself. You know, just speaking briefly, like this whole podcast thing for me, I was kind of like putting it off for months, and you know, I was trying to get the proper equipment and you know the software. Everything had to be perfect. And yeah, <laughs> finally, it was just like, um, you know, let's just, as you said, like, let's just do this and let it evolve and grow and as it naturally does. Yeah. And it was, yeah, challenge. it's challenging. It, you know, it has been for me a little bit to like, just accept honestly where I'm at, you know, it's like not a professional deal, but it's like, you know, I'm doing my best to do the Dharma of my life and yeah. It is what it is in, yeah. in this moment, and I'm, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm so glad that you just do it, <laughs> and 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 that's the that's the message I get from being once I came back from Nepal because of there was so much emphasis on. <laughs> I still want to laugh because it's like almost every day is about you're going to die. You just don't know when. Like it's like a theme, right? Like a good reminder. And, and it is so true. I, I, I feel like I sometimes live my life as if I have forever to live. I mean, as this person, you know, mm -hmm. as this person in this life, in, at this, as this manifestation, but it's not true. It's it, this how I think and my environment will, sh will has, this, has a time limit. And so then it just put, put into perspective, like, what do I want to do? What do I really want to? I mean, there's, there's only that many things we can do within a day. There's only 24, I mean, yeah, like, you know, the physical hour, 24 hours, like plus sleep and all that, plus eating and other stuff. Like, it's really not a lot of time. It's like, there's, it helps. And you just, I just start to like, not do things that, that are not important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's a great reminder too. Letting letting the stuff go that can be let go, so we can focus on what's yeah. what's true and meaningful. And you know, and it's also like you just said, kind of this balance of you know taking care of ourselves and sleeping. You know, it's like we could you know we could do so much if we sacrificed sleep or sacrificed food or sacrificed these other kind of you know foundational parts of well being. Mm -hmm. but then what's the point you know so it's mm -hmm. kind of like we don't necessarily want to like lay down in bed for 20 20 hours a day unless we're unless mm -hmm. we're you know unless we need that if, in the, those moments but you know it's like this balance between laziness you know which you know <laughs> that's like the ego word right we're for like slowing down and nurturing at least that's yeah. what my ego says sometimes when I'm doing that like I'm lazy so there's this <laughs> yeah. balance between like allowing myself to be lazy quote unquote and yeah. and, and act, being active and pursue, right. pursuing what's meaningful yeah yeah I and mean, balance is such a dynamic um, practice it's not mm. static at all because balance is different for everybody even different for myself every day yeah so I think that I think it's like that to be balanced to lead a balanced life I, I find that I have to be so awake because I could just go into this auto, 
way of thinking, but that's never balanced because I'm just repeating a formula that has worked in the past. But to really understand what balance is for me moment to moment is, is, is being very awake and, act and attentive to what needs to be shifted, what needs to have more, what needs to have less, and then keep playing with that. Which, so, you know, for me, I come back to the beginning of this conversation, which is what this, what the movement practices, what the embodiment brings to a more kind of more centered presence so that we can experience the dynamic balance and, and adjust accordingly. And just, yeah. So, mm-hmm. wow. So there's been so many kind of pearls that I want to like remember <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I will, I will remember. I promise that I'll remember all of the pearls. <laughs> and, and I'll, uh, I'll send you an, a, a test and a quiz after this. All right. <laughs> quiz. Thank you. I'll, I'll forward it to everyone. <laughs> and we'll all pass the quiz. Um, and on that note, any like last final thing, final pearls to sprinkle on top. Mm. I mean, for someone who's just, you know, maybe listening mm-hmm. and kind of connecting mm-hmm. with these words and, you know, wanting to yeah. take more action either inwardly or outwardly. I just remember um, the quote from Joseph Campbell, like, it's a privilege of a lifetime to being who you are. And um, I, I've, it's coming back to this place of, of the preciousness of being who we are. Like just to be in, it's so precious to, to have this whole combination that one has in terms of what you look like, how you think, where you are, you're brought up, your, the, com- the conversations you have been having, the people you have met, the, the, the pain that you have suffered, um, the bliss that you have enjoyed. That is such a unique combination. And I feel like the more I tap into the preciousness of that and how um, to be able to cherish that, I think that, and to know that is impermanent at the same time, that it will is like holding sand that is slipping through my fingers continuously. You know, that's a that's a limit. That's that's a limit. A limit. It will it will hit its ending. You know, one of these days it could be fast. It could be slow. But to have more and more, I feel like for me to be more and more. So it's not a concept to make it more as, as real as possible to embody that feeling of like, this is not going to be here for a long time. Mm-hmm. And from that spring, the motivation and inspiration of then what do I want to do with my life? But how do I every moment, it doesn't have to be grand, but even just the ordinary things that we do can be so infused with our attention and our love and so I think the more we understand the preciousness of, of this, of what we're given, I think the more I feel um, good things will come from that, that inspiration, that inspired living. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, from my, what I hear you saying is really start inside, start at the core, yeah. start at the core and then yeah. allow yourself to be moved to take action from that place. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Jovina, how can um, people connect with you and your work and what you're doing in this world? Um, <laughs> I have a website. You've Jovina. got a website. Cool. Yeah. And are you on social media these days? Are you back in it or just kind of like... I, I, you know, I am kind of like tapping toes in i'm not fully, my feet are not fully in yet just my toes dangling above right. the water kind of like right. very little yeah cool so but people jovina.com. can people can connect with jovina.com and jovina I'm, I'm really grateful for the time that we shared in the past and in the present and um much love and gratitude for you and yeah. peace and love to everyone else Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Benjamin.